This was an abstract um, where we studied the impact of um, these different neutrophil recovery phenotypes. So we've previously identified that after CAR T-cell therapy, there are three typical types of neutrophil recovery. The first is quick recovery patient has neutrophil regeneration and this is stable over time. And there's this intermittent or biphasic course where patients have neutrophil recovery and then they have these recurrent neutrophil dips. And finally, um, there's the aplastic phenotype which is characterized by severe uh, neutropenia over 14 days. Um, and in this study, we analyzed, or we really sought to understand what is the pathophysiology of hematological toxicity. That's the first. And we also were interested in how do these neutrophil recovery phenotypes impact um, both other toxicities, but also clinical outcomes. And interestingly, we find that patients that have these recurrent neutrophil dips, these, this biphasic neutrophil recovery, they actually have the best survival outcomes in patient in this large cohort, about 344 patients with relapse refractory LBCL. Um, it was actually even better than the patients that had rapid recovery. Whereas the patient that had had this aplastic neutrophil recovery, so deep bone marrow aplasia, these patients had fairly poor uh, treatment outcomes. And when we perform multivariable modeling, we actually see that for the intermittent phenotype, it was actually independent of other established risk factors such as LDH, ECOG, or CRP. However, the risk um, in the plastic phenotype was actually attenuated when we account for these other factors. So in the second phase of the study, we then analyzed uh, both um, CAR T-cell expansion kinetics by phenotype, and we also looked at routine and exploratory serum proteomics. And when we look at now um, the CAR T-cell expansion kinetics, we find that this intermittent phenotype, recurrent neutrophil dips, these patients actually had a higher area under the CAR T-cell expansion curve, so they had more pronounced expansion. Whereas the patients with a plastic phenotype, they had less pronounced um, expansion. And I think what's always really important is setting how do we compare expansion to baseline tumor load. And so what we did there is we studied um, what was the expansion in relation to baseline tumor load. And we found that the plastic patients, while they may even have expansion, it's really they also have uh, high f uh, LDH levels, high ferritin at baseline. So they have an unfavorable relation of CAR expansion to tumor load. Whereas the intermittent patients, they had a favorable relation of expansion to baseline tumor load. Um, and so I think that that's, uh, that's an interesting finding of this study. Uh, the second relates to serum proteomics, where we find this was, we, we performed this with Olink, which is a proximity extension uh, assay, um, multiplexed. Um, we looked at four time points, zero, so before uh, CAR-T infusion, uh, four, 14, and 28. What was rather striking is that now studying aplastic versus non-aplastic, the aplastic patients had profound immune dysregulation at baseline already. They had upregulation of soluble T-cell ligands, and then after CAR T-cell infusion, we observed that these patients have an inflammatory um, pattern uh, that really is reminiscent of macrophage activation. And it's mirrored by, in routine proteomics, that these patients also have high levels of serum ferritin. Um, these patients also have profound endothelial and angiogenetic dysfunction over time, and this was actually progressive. So between day four and 28 it was increasing. So I think that these results have important implications for understanding that hematological toxicity needs to be understood not only in a quantitative sense, but also in terms of qualitative differences that are really distinct. Um, this implies also that when we think about management strategies, we have to think be, or be cognizant of the fact that the underlying mechanisms may be very different between the different um, neutrophil recovery phenotypes. Finally, I think what this highlights is that um, these patients um, the neutrophil recovery phenotypes, really they have clinically profound implications. The patients that have these recurrent neutrophil dips have better outcomes, which I think suggests that there are really important links between host hematopoiesis and perhaps CAR T cell function and efficacy.